This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. It is believed that somewhere in the high mountains of Peru lies wealth beyond imagining. Gold, the lost treasure of a great empire. The empire was called Tawantinsuya, kingdom of the Inca. White men called it something else. For them, it was El Dorado. They found that the fabled cities of gold were real. But if the mountains could speak, they would tell a sad story. A story of lust and greed and treachery. But men have not learned to read the wind or the cry of great birds that soar over lost kingdoms. The secret is safe for a while yet. The green world between the peaks has not given up the treasure of the Incas. Men still search, some out of love for the past, some out of love for gold. Now the in-search of cameras come closer than men have been before to the heart of the mystery of the great Inca treasure. The great spine of the Andes Mountains accents one of the most diverse environments in the world. It is a land of many wonders, which has attracted the curious and the greedy for centuries. For some, there is wealth enough in the remnants of the Western Hemisphere's first great civilization. For others, pottery shards and broken masonry are not enough. They seek the precious yellow metal called gold. The mountains and jungles of Peru have provided an irresistible lure for centuries. There's the romance of faraway places and people with exotic customs. The feeling of being in a Shangri-La, somehow cut off from the crush of too many people and too little time. There's another ingredient in this appealing mix, the promise of treasure beyond imagining. It's a promise that has touched off wars and launched brave men on great adventures. The great city of the Incas was Cusco. It lives on even though the empire it gave birth to is gone. The streets of Cusco are full of the modest sounds of commerce now. Once they echoed to the marching feet of an imperial army, an army which enforced the will of god kings on 12 million subjects. The people of Cusco have endured. They are descendants of a race which conceived, conquered, then lost to a handful of Spaniards, one of the world's most remarkable empires. Yet, relatively little is known of the roots of this remarkable people. The ruined Inca fortress of Sacsayhuaman is testimony to the Inca genius for building. Strong backs needed to haul great weight were conscripted from conquered peoples. The massive masonry was perfectly tooled, built to last forever. Thousands of artists labored directly for the state to embellish the palaces of priests and princes. The Inca excelled at engineering and advanced methods of irrigation and crop management. Even in death, the Inca were a proud and disciplined race. At the National Museum of Anthropology and Archaeology in Lima, Dr. Edward Verstellen and his colleagues inspect an Incan mummy. Much of what is known about Inca civilization comes from studying graves. The things a person considered important in death say much about how he lived his life.
to touch things that were precious to someone of another time, another world. It is an irreverence born of a need to know. In the quest for knowledge, investigators must compete with those whose quest is for riches. There's a thriving black market in Inca gold and artifacts. This Inca might have lived in glorious times. He might have seen an empire created in less than 30 years, or witnessed the arrival in 1527 of a Spaniard named Francisco Pizarro. That arrival was barely a hundred years from the Inca's explosion of conquest. But for the empire, that was all the time there was to be. In one of the most amazing events of history, the great and mighty of the Inca nation would vanish into the jungle, driven into oblivion by 180 men in rusting Spanish armor. Hiram Bingham was one of many who would devote part of his life to following the blurred trail left by the Inca. The young Yale archaeologist and explorer entered the Andes in 1910. He believed that the Inca must have built another great city once they abandoned Cusco to the Spanish. Bingham knew that Pizarro had held the Inca king Atahualpa captive and that an enormous ransom in gold was raised to meet Pizarro's demands. But Pizarro had the Inca king murdered before the gold was safely in his hands. Bingham might have reasoned that to find the lost city of the Incas was to find the gold that had eluded Pizarro. The explorer devoted more than a year to his quest. Then, one insufferably hot day in July 1911, Bingham thought he'd found the mythical city. As Bingham approached the ghost city that would be called Machu Picchu, he was convinced that his long search had paid off, that he had truly found the last capital of the Incas. He found temples, but no hoard of treasure. Bingham wrote that he had never seen such exquisite masonry, temples open to the sky, undoubtedly constructed for sun worship. Bingham was sure he had discovered the retreat where the last Inca kings ruled in the sunset years of their empire. The road Bingham traveled to the discovery of Machu Picchu was a hard one. The world celebrated his prize, and the young explorer became one of the decade's most appealing heroes. But Bingham was wrong. Machu Picchu was not the last capital of the Incas, the legendary Vilcabamba. Like so much about the Inca civilization and its celebrated riches, the truth remained just out of reach. What was needed was other men of courage and vision to pick up where Bingham left off with his remarkable discovery of Machu Picchu, to pursue his dream deeper into the Andean wilderness. At the San Marcos University in Lima, Peru, are the offices of a world-renowned authority on Inca history. He is Professor Edmundo Guillen, and he has devoted his adult life to solving the riddles that perplexed earlier scholars like Bingham. On June 24, 1976, Guillen's work would make headlines around the world, and the In Search of Cameras would be there to record his remarkable discovery. In a quiet valley of the Rio Pampacona, northeast of Cusco, the stage is set for one of the great modern feats of exploration. It is 1976 and men have traveled to the moon in spaceships. But the travel here means saddle sores, blistered feet, and aching muscles. For Edmundo Guillen, it is a small price to pay. Together with 10 colleagues from Peru and Poland, he is setting out on a great adventure. Oh, no. 
Guillen's mission is of more than simple academic curiosity. He is out to recapture a place and a moment in history. And if he can, to set the record straight on the final chapter of the Inca Empire. The popular belief is that Pizarro's murder of the Inca king Atahualpa brought the old empire instantly to its knees. Guillen thinks that murder was just the beginning of the end for the Inca. Once over the first ridge from Pampacona, the trek begins in earnest. Hiram Bingham saw this country before Edmundo Guillen was born. He gloried in its breathtaking beauty and struggled valiantly to unlock its mysteries. But Bingham did not have the blood of Incas in his veins. Guillen does. It is the culmination of years of research and planning and of some extraordinary luck. In the Spanish archives at Seville, Guillen discovered letters written by soldiers of the king sent to battle the Inca. They described Vilcabamba in detail, including the neighboring geography. Guillen knows that the secret is within his grasp. One Spanish soldier wrote, when I entered Vilcabamba, the city was desolate. The palace of the Inca burned. The food storages sacked. The letter was dated June 24th, 1572. Guillen vows he will re-enter Vilcabamba on the same day of the same month. Each tree along the route could be a signpost. Each valley might be the one described in letters written by Spanish soldiers. The painstaking research is paying off for Guillen and his band. There are minor discoveries to be made almost every day of the long trek. Tantalizing portents of what may lie beyond the next stream, over the next ridge, Along a river named on no map, Guillen and his band are intrigued by what seems to be a cave entrance. A crypt is discovered, its entrance long hidden by tons of debris. Guillen believes it may be the grave of an important person perhaps a member of Inca royalty. It is clear from the discovery of the crypt that the end of Guillen's quest cannot be far away. He will return another day to excavate the site. Great effort is still required if the last chapter to the Inca Empire is not to be written from the memoirs of some long dead Spanish priest who may have been angered because proud savages worship the sun. There are only two days left if Guillen is to make his rendezvous with history on schedule. It is here, just as Guillen knew it would be. Vilcabamba at last. For everyone involved, it is the culmination of a great dream. a.m. 
June 24th. Precisely 403 years have passed since soldiers of Spain sacked this city. Edmundo Guillen has kept the promise he made to himself. Vilcabamba is retaken. It is all here. The superb Inca masonry combined with a light and airy style of building open to the sky. It all started in the valley called Cusco. For a century, kings called Inca ruled from a city that was the marvel of pre-European civilization in the Americas. And there were the great fortresses like Sacsayhuaman. The long retreat of the Inca began with the coming of the Spaniards. But the glory was real. Even as they fought the Spaniards for control of their lush valleys, the Inca had time to build magnificent mountain retreats like Machu Picchu. Guillen believes he has at last discovered the real thing, larger by far than Machu Picchu. From records left by two Spanish friars who visited Vilcabamba in 1570, Guillen begins to reconstruct the city in his mind. The roofing tiles he finds are evidence that the city was built late in the Incan imperial era. The Incas traditionally covered their buildings with thatch. The Spanish introduced tile. There will be time for only a brief survey of his remarkable discovery. Later, others will come to assist with the detailed excavation necessary to piece together the last years of Inca greatness. The trained eye finds much evidence which helps date the construction of the long hidden city. Almost everything Guillen finds seems to have been built about the same time. He feels this is a clear indication that Vilcabamba was hastily constructed as a refuge from encroaching Spanish soldiers. Yet the city's waterworks are as sophisticated as any in Cusco. After 400 years, they still work. The city was carefully planned and could have withstood a long siege by any army. There was the Temple of the Sun, perhaps as grand as any at Machu Picchu. Guillen finds evidence that it was faced with solid gold. Sun temples were both centers of worship and astronomical observatories. The placement of stones aided the Inca in studying the movement of stars. Their knowledge of astronomy was remarkably advanced. The Inca were remarkable builders, yet they never standardized their tools or techniques. They were familiar with higher mathematics and never invented the wheel. Like everything else Guillen has learned about the Inca, Vilcabamba will probably raise as many questions as it answers. The layout of the city seems to match the descriptions Guillen uncovered in the Seville archives. The discovery clearly puts Inca history in a different light. The Inca did not give up their empire lightly, Guillen believes. Time and their gods were against them, and they lost it all after a struggle Guillen estimates lasted some 40 years. Still, it is good to be home. For the explorers, the occasion of Vilcabamba's discovery was both joyful and solemn. Fue ocupada por el ejército español. Ahora izamos la bandera 
After more than 400 years, Guillen is reclaiming Vilcabamba in the name of the Inca people. Viva Vilcabamba, viva el Peru! When Edmundo Guillen marched into Vilcabamba, the gold was gone. He believes the Inca may have dumped it into one of dozens of nearby lakes to prevent it from falling into Spanish hands. But Guillen discovered a treasure, nevertheless. His was the treasure of satisfaction and achievement. The treasure of writing a new chapter to the history of a proud and brilliant people called Inca. Within weeks, Guillen's discovery would make headlines throughout South America and the world. Ahead lay many months of hard work, excavating the ruins of Vilcabamba, seeking clues to other unresolved mysteries about the Inca. For now, Guillen could rest secure in the knowledge that he had made answers possible. Coming up next, an agent has no alibi when he's accused of murder on FBI The Untold Stories. Then, History's Crimes and Trials chronicles the genocidal rule of the Khmer Rouge and the development of Pol Pot's Cambodian killing fields. And later tonight, fighter ace and Luftwaffe administrator Ernst Houdet heads for failure and disgrace as one of Hitler's generals. At 9, here on the History Channel, where the past comes alive.